Namaste. Yes, so we will continue from where we left yesterday. We discussed about the origin of Ayurveda from Brahma to Prajapati to Ashwinis and Indra. And this is a transmission we understood that is happening in nature itself. It is not dependent on humans. It is the transmission of the laws of nature in the process of creation of the universe. That is why Brahma, Prajapati, Ashwinis and the whole world is sustained by the knowledge of these laws. Each and every atom, every cell in the universe is following these laws. And human cognizance of these laws happen when we expand our mental faculties and reach which is symbolically represented as approaching indra and we may also discuss that indra means to know indra jnane so it is just the awakening of that knowledge or awareness conscious awareness of the laws of life that we consider as the discovery of ayurveda and what is written down is not final or it is not the eternal Ayurveda. The writings are only a tools for us to refine our mind and grasp the eternal knowledge of Ayurveda which is preserved in nature. So even if the memory of Ayurveda were to be wiped out from the human minds, it will still survive in nature. As the Atharva Veda says, the mongoose knows it. The eagle knows it, the boar knows it. We cannot destroy Ayurveda in nature. So that is the concept. So it uh, is conveying to us that we need to take efforts to elevate our consciousness through Ugra Tapas. and then bring preserve this knowledge of ayurveda through a process of adhyayana continuous adhyayana is needed to preserve the memory of the knowledge of ayurveda i think i also indicated that the charaka samhitas is referring to the loss of this knowledge even the rishis forgot this knowledge because they led a you know, a very easy life. So Ayurveda is coming with that process of self-transformation. The more you practice it, the more, you know, strong and established this knowledge becomes in our consciousness. So this is something that needs to be practiced in our lives. Ayurveda, is you have to live Ayurveda. So that is what we learned from these discussions. And that in those days, there was this unique coming together of the rishis, great rishis, we saw those names, very eminent rishis of those times. I don't know even if this is symbolic, because these rishis may seem to represent a very uh, different time frame. It means that this is happening again and again. 
you know it, it is may not be that the rishis cognized ayurveda at one time itself this may have repeatedly happened but of course the text is it is also very likely that we cannot really go and see and fix the date of exactly when this happened we wouldn't be able to do that so i think we should take the take home message is that the elite in society the most knowledgeable people even today that is what happens when there is a health problem there is a pandemic the most knowledgeable people come together they discuss and try to find out how to you know discover a problem so such a high level consultation happened in those days also and it was the result of that consultation that led to bharadwaja you know being nominated he self nominated himself when the rishis asked for somebody to volunteer and it was bharadwaja who initiated this whole process of the discovery of ayurveda so that is where we have stopped so let me share the slides again so i will yes are you able to see the slokas are you all able to read, read it i mean enlarged it i hope it is visible and readable so the discussion continues धर्मार्थ काम मोक्षाण आरोग्य मूल उत्तम रोगास्तर्ता श्रेयसो जीवित प्रादुर्भूद मनुष्याण अंतरा महान कसा शमोपाय ध्यान स्थित सो दिस इज द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ डिस्कशन वाई इज आरोग्य सो इंपॉर्टेंट वी ऑल से हेल्थ इज वेल्थ बट हेल्थ is not a wealth that should be squandered that should not be wasted what is the purpose of health so this idea is being repeated again and again earlier itself we saw tapopavasya adhyayana brahmacharya vratayusham why is dirghan jivitam why is arogyam so important dharmartha kama mokshanam arogyam moolam uttamam in order to achieve dharmartha kama moksha which is the actual purusharthas or the actual goal of the human life we need arogyam arogyam is the uttama moolam for dharma, the pursuit of dharmartha kama moksha so the rogas are not destroying arogya actually they are destroying our dharmartha kama moksha the pursuit of dharmartha kama moksha is destroyed when roga happens shreyaso jeevitasya cha so this is the thing we know in the upanishads there is this idea of shreyas and prayas so human life we are there is this call to wake up in the pursuit of shreyas not prayas yado abhyudhaya nisreyasa siddhissa dharma so through which we achieve both the spiritual uh, you know realization as well as material prosperity the that which which we achieve both is called as dharma yatho abhyudaya nishraya sa siddhi so spiritual and material development was balanced ayurveda also that is why it's clearly bringing dharma artha kama moksha nam all the four purusharthas are emphasized here so life has to evolve in a balanced way so rogas are act that the real problem here is not just people are getting sick so today we know that the whole world is talking about sustainable development goals so what is sustainability this is the idea that in our culture we have been talking about in the terms of dharma dharma dhareti idi dharma dharma means sustainability not all our endeavors has to be sustainable in the long run it should be dharmic so i would call this sdgs as sustainable dharmic goals 
not sustainable just instead of development goals if you put it sustainable dharmic goals then you know we come to this old ancient idea that all our activities should be based on dharma sukhartha sarva bhodana mata sarva pravartaya sukham chana vina dharmat tasmat dharma paro bhavet so we are all living to achieve sukham sukham chana vina dharmat if our actions are not sustainable then we are not going to get sukham that is the whole idea so the rogas are destroying our capability to sustain dharma that is the biggest challenge here it is not that i am just being sick if if it is just a matter of sickness we just need you know medicine to cure the sickness ayurveda does not want to just remove illnesses from society ayurveda wants to remove illness in society in such a way that people become empowered to follow the path of dharma so when janapada dhamsariya is a chapter in charaka samhita which comes later which is dealing with janapada nam dhamsa whole janapadas whole human settlements are getting eliminated completely destroyed why because of pandemics because of natural calamities because of climate change the idea of climate change leading to janapada dhamsa or or the possibility of climate change happening because of adharmic actions and this in turn destroying entire large segments of human population is first postulated in the charaka samhita in a chapter called janapada dhamsa and in that it is clearly mentioned that tasya moolam adharma the root cause of all these calamities is adharma so dharmartha kama mokshanam aarogyam moolam uttamam rogas tasya bahartara shreyaso jeevitasya cha pradurbhudo manushyanam antarayo mahanayam kasyat tesham shamo upaya ityuktva dhyanam asti so this is very important here to think most of the time when i read this textbook earlier the idea that was conveyed and dot i grasped also is that okay disease has happened which is a big problem and to remove disease ayurveda was discovered but if you read very carefully you can see that the concern about disease is eclipsed by the concern about the inability to follow dharma pradurbhudo manushyanam antarayo disease is an obstacle disease is not the problem the problem is that we are not able to uh, follow dharmartha kama and moksha i think this is what makes ayurveda very different from a medical system ayurveda is in that way a dharma shastra artha shastra kama shastra moksha shastra all of these things combined together because the goal of ayurveda is to help the individual to achieve the purushartha and in order to do that health is essential that is why there is this emphasis on arogya so the primary intervention here is antara mahanayam antaraya it's a it's a huge manushyanam i am mahan antarayo pradurbhuta and what is that antaraya that is the complete inability to follow dharma, the purusharthas the whole human society the whole fabric of human society is sustained on the following on adherence to the purusharthas so if we don't adhere to the purusharthas human illness is not just physical illness even social disruption of social relationships psychological problems all that will happen if we don't stick to dharmartha kama moksha we want everybody <clears throat> to dream and realize the higher goals of life so my dream should not kill another person's dream <clears throat> another person's dream should not kill yet another person's dream how can we all dream and let dream let everybody in the world 
be able to realize their the only way to do that is dharma so if there is adharma there is mental illness first and then mental illness will get translated into physical illness so that is why the rishis got really worried kasyat tesham shamopaya what is the solution for this ityuktva dhyana mastika so they looked inside they delved deep into the problem they contemplated on the problem they did not simply suggest some solutions they wanted to know what is the problem and all of them took that effort so identifying a problem then the method of solving that problem we don't want quick fix solutions that's the difference that you can see here today people would do some analysis some bits and pieces and some quick fix solution maybe fridge of capra one of the physicists who wrote the book tao of physics the turning point he says that one of the biggest problems of humanity today is that we are not able to understand that the multiple problems that humanity is facing today are all interlinked they are all coming from a basic flaw we are fragmenting each problem we are trying to fix each problem separately and then thinking that all the problems will get solved but when one problem is solved a new problem is coming so our rishis did not do that kind of an analytical thinking they contemplated on that problem athate sharanam chakram dadrshur dhyana chakshusha so this is very very important uh, point that is mentioned here how the solution was arrived at so why is this dhyanam happening and how what do you mean by this jnana chakshus this is a method to identify a problem see when you are saying dhyana, dhyanam asthita today when you want to do a scientific study you have to first eliminate bias in a biased mind the correct perception of the problem will not happen the correct perception of the solution will not happen so the first thing ayurveda also says who is an apta rajastamo bhyam nirmukta tapo jnana balena ye yesham trikalam amalam jnanam avyahatam sada apta shishta vibuddhaste tesham vakyam samshayam satyam vachyanti te kasmat asatyam nirajastama so nirajastama bhava that is what needs to be invoked for us to see the problem as it is today we are perceiving the problems with our rajas and tamas all the color in our mind is being imposed onto the problem that we are perceiving so the first step to solve a problem is to remove the mind with, from all the bias that is why dhyana vasthita so when that rajas and tamas dies out then light of sattva will awaken in your mind athade sharanam chakram dadrshur dhyana chakshusha then the dhyana chakshus will open so dhyana chakshus will open means the person has no bias they are objectively contemplating and analyzing the problem and when they do that that insight comes from deep inside an unbiased understanding of the problem and an unbiased perception of the solution so they found that chakra or indra is the solution savakshyadi samopayam yathavad amara prabhu so this indra indra is amara because indra is there always it is indra is a devata it is a state of our own mind so it is possible for anybody at any time in the whole flow of creation any even today indra is there it's access he is accessible if we want we can access that is why he is called as amara as a human being my identity will dissolve when i am gone when my body perishes but indra is available to every human being he is an amara because he is a devata is a is a state of mind which can be invoked in any person any living person can invoke the state of indra 
so that is why it's called as amara so that is the deva loka which means that which exists independent of the humans the devatas are all there in our mano loka they are knowledge that is why diva prakash diva prakashane deva is to to light that is how diwali and all that comes in hindi also deva so deva is a light the light of knowledge that is in a higher state of our own minds so any time i want i can elevate myself so all the devatas are you know eternal shiva is eternal devi is eternal because in every human beings may come and go but the devatas remain because any any human being at any point of time in any birth at any place at any time by doing this dhyana they can evoke and invoke the presence of these devatas so athate sharanam chakram dadrushur dhyana chakshusha sa vakshyadi samopayam yathavada mara prabhu so who will go to sahasraksha bhavanam who will do this task of invoking and uh, evoking you know the presence of indra kas sahasraksha bhavanam gacchet prashtum shachipatim and when this question was asked so all of them contemplated in a non biased way they looked at the problem objectively they put out all their personal you know preferences all their misconceptions their prejudices everything was eliminated and everybody unanimously came to the conclusion that only by the knowledge of ayurveda is already there in nature we just need to cognize it and in order to cognize it somebody has to elevate their mind to the state of india who will do that became the question kasahasraksha bhavanam gachet so it's not actually going to the bhavana of chakra means elevating your mind to that higher state aham arthe niyujje vatre yadi prathamam vachah bharadvajo bravit tasma drushibhis saniyojita so here is a voluntary thing it's not like we had to force they had to force somebody you go he go they asked the question and bharadwaj immediately raised his hand and said aham arthe niyujjayam please assign me for this task i am ready to do that so because he became the first person to say that that does not mean that bharadwaj was not the only person who could have achieved it but this is an idea of voluntarism one person has to go and everybody is ready but one person just lifts his hand and then he is chosen that is how bharadwaja was chosen the only reason why he was chosen was prathamam vacha there was again no bias or no it was a very open you know neutral discussion everybody had a chance to take this initiative but bharadwaja was that person to volunteer first aham arthe niyujjeya matreri prathamam vacha bharadwajo bravi tasmad so here that word tasmad is very clearly telling us why was bharadwaja chosen not because somebody had a bias towards bharadwaja oh he is my friend so let me ask bharadwaja to go or he has helped me a lot so let bharadwaja go no bharadwaja volunteered aham atrani aham arthe niyujje matre di prathamam vacha bharadwajo bravi tasmad rishi bhisa niyojida only for that reason they said okay you have taken the first step you have that intention the intention was the only criteria bharadwaja so spontaneously offered himself because to achieve go to indra that much intention is required now nobody can be forced to do that so rishi said no doubt that bharadwaja is the right person to go because since he had the highest intention prathamam vachah bharadwajo bravit bharadwaja gave was the first person to say i will go that it shows that he had the high, the most intense intention to do this and that intention was the only criteria for bharadwaja to be chosen to go to indra and then it happened sashakra bhavanam gatva surashri gana madhyagam dadarsha balahantaram 
Deepyamanamivanalam. So whenever the knowledge, states of knowledge, higher states of knowledge, it's something abstract. So in order for us to concretize it so that we can grasp it easily, Indra is picturized, you know, he's humanized or he's made into a, a god with a physical shape. But you can see Deepyamanamivanalam. Indra is like fire, the fire of knowledge. So he beheld Indra glowing like fire. Dipyamanam Ivanalam. And you can see what all these methods, how knowledge should be obtained, how you must go to a knowledgeable person. So bhigamya jayashir bhirabhinandya sureshwaram provaja vinayad dhiman dhiman rishinam vakhyam uttamam. So he approaches Indra and then praises him with Jayashihi, giving all the due respect. So this is a very important thing. When you want to receive knowledge from a higher source, we have to become receptive. So all these verses have a purpose. It is not simply telling a story. From every verse, there is a message, takeaway message. Jhanamastita. Ah, the word Shreyas here is, in my understanding, it is Nishreyasaha because Jeevitasya has also been added. So Jeevitasya Shreyasaha cha. So Jeevita, I think, is standing for Abhidaya here because both words are mentioned. And Shreya is for the highest Shreyas. So Shreyas prayas. So we, if, if, if the Jeevitam is not for the higher Shreyas, then it becomes a pursuit of prayas. So Jeevita and Shreyas together is good. So here it is clearly mentioned. Rogas Tasyabahartara Shreyasu Jeevita Cha. So since both are mentioned, I, I am I have thought about this, and my conclusion is that Shreyas is the moksha and Jeevita is you know the physical uh, material development. That's how I have understood it. So everywhere, you can see every word has to be studied very, very carefully. We have to, this is also a very good uh, analysis. What does Shreyas mean here? And why two words are there, Shreyas or Jeevita Sicha? So all those things are very carefully written. It's not a casual writing. So Dhyana here means removing the manas of Rajas and Tamas and awakening the Dhyana chapters and seeing the solution. And then the, allowing the best person to, you know, uh, venture out to find that solution. No other criteria. And then after reaching the, the source, Bharadwaja is trying to become as receptive as possible. So that is the concept here. So bhigamya jayashir bhir abhinandya sureshwaram provacha vinaya dhiman rishinam vakhyam uttama. So he goes there and vinaya is extremely humble. He goes and praises, we know because, you know, water will flow from a high area, from a height to something which is low. So if you want the knowledge to come down from Indra into our mind, we have to be receptive, we have to be humble. You cannot say, oh, I have been nominated by the Rishi, so I am a great person, come on, give me this knowledge. No, Bharadwaja bows down because he wants to be a receiver. A receiver has to bow down. So, yeah, I can see a question here. What is prayas? This is mentioned in the Upanishad, prayas and shreyas. Like if you go behind temporary pleasures in life, that is all. Today the whole world is going behind prayas. Nobody is interested in shreyas. In Ayurveda, this was differentiated as hitam and priyam. Hitam is that which is 
तदात्वे च अनुबंधे च यस्याद अशुभम फलम तदात्व सुखदा बट अनुबंध दुखदा अनुबंध विल बी दुख इमीडियटली देर इज प्लेशर वॉट इज इमीडियटली प्लेशरेबल वी ऑल वॉन्ट टू फॉलो दैट विदउट लुकिंग एट द लॉन्ग टर्म सुख and that is why we that is how we pile up problem after problem in our life because we cannot distinguish between prayers and shreyas so ayurveda also tells us priya meva tu laukika laukikas will follow the priya way of life vaidikas will follow the hitam way of life and karma pavargis go beyond all this they have already reached that for them there is neither priyam nor hitam nor ahitam or apriyam they go beyond so three ways of living is there all of us who is a laukika a laukika is a person who is very superficial who looks but cannot see the word loka and the english word look are very similar many people look but few people see so laukikas are lookers they are not seers that is why the rishis are called as seers they are not lookers they are not on lookers we look at life like spectators sitting in a stadium and clapping we don't see what is happening there is no insights we are living like animals but not even with the instinct of animals so when we see pleasurable things we just get lost and then when the dukkha comes because nature is trying to awaken us dukkha is nothing but the compassion of nature to awaken us when there is dukkha we realize something has gone wrong then the whole awareness awakens so there is no punishment there is only compassion so dukkha is also a highest form of compassion of nature because of that dukkha we are awakening so that is how shreyas and prayas these terms and concepts may differ i mean the terms may differ in ayurveda we have not used shreyas prayas we have used hitam and priyam so that which is so hita hitam sukham dukham ayush tasya hita hitam so the whole goal is that we must find out what is hitam for us what is hitam will take us to shreyas and shreyas includes material prosperity also whereas prayas will eventually lead us to the loss of both material well being as well as spiritual well being so bharadwaja reaches sindra provacha dhin vinaya dhiman rishi nam vakya muttayam he conveys this so he is still a messenger he has come with a mission he says i am here on behalf of the rishis you know i felt enthused it happened spontaneously that i offered myself to come but my mission here is to speak on behalf of the rishis i am come here to collect the knowledge and pass it on his agenda doesn't change he doesn't when he reaches indra he doesn't suddenly think oh my god this is good let me get all this knowledge and let me go my way i can become healthy no he doesn't forget his mission so he says vinay promach vinaya dhiman rishinam vakyam uttamam vyadhayo hi samutpanna sarva prani bhayankara so again the word sarva prani he says see my, my the problem i am seeing is that not only human sarva prani bhayankara today we are talking of zoonosis animals are getting sick and that is being transmitted there is a concept of one health human health environmental health animal health everything has to be seen together now you can see this concept of one health in this word sarva prani bhayangara vyadhav yo hi samutpanna sarva prani bhayangara we need one health not just human health tada bhudeshu anukrosham in a few verses before we heard bhudeshu anukrosham again it is a concept of one health that we cannot look at human health divorced from environmental health or animal health all the three have to be seen together and that is a new concept of one health so sarva prani bhayangara vyatayo hi samutpanna sarva prani bhayangara tad bruhi me samopayam yathavad amara prabho 
Now, please tell me the solution. This is what the Rishis want me to find out from you. What is, how can we achieve one health? This is, this is really very important that he has not gone and asked for a single solution. I have, I have somebody with cancer. Can you give me a medicine that will cure it? No. He's going to the root of the problem and saying, Vyadhayohi Samutpannaha Sarva Prani Bhayangaraha. I want to solve, solve this problem once and for all. How do we achieve one health? How do we achieve the health of the environment? How do we achieve the health of the animals? How do we achieve the health of the humans? So when he has really put the problem, you know, in such a comprehensive manner, Tasmai Provacha Bhagavan Ayurvedam Shatakram. So Indra is not giving a big discourse. Indra is telling you are already so intelligent. I have to just give you some pointers and you will understand. So Padair Alpaihi. Indra's teaching is only in Padas, not even Slokas. Buddhimadamtu Swanumana Yukti Kushalanam Anuktarth Granaya. The way the teaching happens in ancient time is to promote self knowledge. It is not spoon feeding. It's not that everything is, you know, put into pages and books and volumes and then, you know, uh, transmitted. No, self learning is encouraged. Many times in the old Gurukulas, nothing was taught. Gurostu Maunam Vyakya. The Shishyastu Chinda Samshaya. The teaching happens in such a way that the discovery happens to that person. Only what I discover for myself will stay. Second hand knowledge is not allowed in this tradition. I just read some verses by heart it and repeat it. That's not, that means that I have no knowledge at all. Knowledge has to come from within. It has to be experiential. So the teaching is very limited. Tasmai Provacha Bhagavan Ayurvedam Shatakradu Padai Ralpai. He said, Oh Bharadwaja, you are a very intelligent person. I just need to tickle you a little bit here and there and you will understand everything. Vipulam Madhim Paramarshaye Vipulam Madhim Budhva Padai Ralpai Provacha. Because he had such a Vipula Mati, he has such great intelligence. Indra realized, Indra is saying that I don't need to give you a long discourse. You can soon be gone and complete your mission. Here are the clues. The rest you will understand. The rest you will discover by yourself. By the time Bharadwaja comes back, he has the insight of the whole of Ayurveda. So this preparation on part of the individual, knowledge is, is like a blossoming from within. And that is so beautifully described here. When that great moment happens of when Indra is going to transmit the knowledge to Bharadwaja, somebody who want, wants to write down notes may be very disappointed because Indra has hardly said anything. No notes to leak. No notes to capture. Indra tells us, Bharadwaja a few things. See, look that, look here. This is how it is. And Bharadwaja says, thank you. I have understood. So this is a very, very higher level of learning. So the less buddhi, the less preparedness, the more elaborate the teaching has to be. So here the student effort is very, very high. Bharadwaja is a very, very high level student. Today we are talking about andragogy, adult learning, experiential learning, where the whole focus is on student-centric learning and not didactic teaching. So you can see Ayurvedic teaching was not didactic. It's not that somebody says this is how it is, this is how it is. It's a very creative way of transmitting knowledge. So that is, this is very, very important to look at how this whole transmission happened. And so Padai Ralpaihi Matim Buddhva Vipulam Paramashram. So let us move on to the next verse. So what was it that Bharadwaja transmitted? This is the 
whole crux, I mean the whole core of Ayurveda, the whole core of Ayurveda was transmitted. And the Varadvaja is being told only the essential things, the rest he says you can develop on your own. Hetulinga Ushatat Jnanam Swasthadura Parayanam Trisutram Shashwadam Punyam Bubudheyam Pitamaha. So this is the whole logic of Ayurveda, Hetulinga Ushatat Jnanam. For both Swastha and Atura. Swastha is a person who is healthy. We need to take him to higher levels of health. We need to prevent him from becoming sick. And somebody who is Atura has to be made Swastha again. How is this possible? Through Hetulinga Aushadat Jnanam. Everything in Ayurveda follows this logic. The logic is that when a, we see a problem of disease manifests in the form of Lingas, Lakshanas. So when I am sick, I have pain. This is what a patient tells, I have pain here. Patient sees only the tip of the iceberg. What the patient experiences is only a, a fraction of what's really happening, sorry, inside the body. So what is the why they expected to do? When he sees the lakshanas or lingas or the presentation of the disease, using the lingas, he must identify the hetu. This is diagnosis. From linga to hetu. By the presentation of the disease, find out the cause and mechanism of the disease. If you identify the cause and mechanism of the disease, then you can find the aushata or the treatment. So this is what an Ayurveda physician is expected to do. A patient comes in front of me and the coming is coming with a presentation. These are the symptom presentation. So looking at the symptoms, looking at the symptoms, we analyze and find the causes. Until we find the cause of the disease or the mechanism of the disease, all causes may not be always traceable. But we need to know how the causes operated in the body, how the disease has actually manifested and how it is progressing. This is the process of going from Linga to Hetu. Once you identify the Hetu, the Aushadha can also be conceived. Aushadha is working opposite to the Hetu. So Hetu Linga Aushadha Sthyanam, this is called the Triskandha Ayurveda or Trisutra Ayurveda. So everything is explained as Trisutra. For every problem there is a cause and when you identify the cause there is a solution. So problem, cause, solution or cause, problem, solution. From the cause comes the problem and when you understand the cause you can formulate the Solution. So this is what Indra told Bharadwaja. If you want to identify a disease, analyze the disease signals. The, the disease comes with signals. Symptoms are nothing but signals that something is wrong. If I did not have pain, if I did not have burning sensation, I would never know that something is wrong with me. That is why diseases have symptoms, because the body has to give us signals. The body is, it's a body's distress message. It's a distress signal coming from the body. That is what we understand as disease. So we, if I am sick, I experience that distress. My, the body is forcing me to pay attention to it. See, something is wrong. That is why it is making me suffer. It is pinching me. It is giving me pain. So that I will, you know, give some attention. But I don't know why that pain is happening. I don't know why there is a burning sensation. And that is the task of the Vaidya. If the patient is not able to know what is happening, then the Vaidya has to try and understand. Why is there pain? Oh, it is due to Vata. It is due to Pitta. It is due to Kapha. It is because Vata has been obstructed by a growth in this particular part of the body. So we analyze that and once we understand that it is due to a blockage, then the treatment is very clear by removing that blockage, that pain will go. And why did that blockage happen in the first place? So Ayurveda tries to understand the root cause of why this whole chain of events 
that led to the manifestation of disease happened in the first place. And by identifying the root cause, we can eliminate and remove the disease. This is the whole concept of Hetu Linga Aushatas Jnanam, Swasthadura Parayanam, Trisutram Shashvatam Punyam. And this is Shashvatam. Not only in Ayurveda, in any field, if there is an economics problem, economics problem will also show some indicators that there is something wrong. And if the, those signals have to be analyzed to identify the causes. By identifying the causes, we can formulate a solution. So this is a Shashwada thing. In this world, any field, any field you take, problem solving happens through the logic of this Trasutra. And because it can help people solve problems and move forward in their lives, it is called Punyam. Trisutram Shashwadam Punyam Hedulinga Ushadatnyanam. It is Shashwadam and it is Punyam. Bhubudheyam Pitamaha. It was this knowledge that Indra got also from Brahma, which Brahma knows spontaneously. This is the knowledge in nature that if you identify a problem, the cause of a problem, you can always find a solution. That is a design of nature. So Bubudheyam Pitamaha, Brahma is also designed this universe in such a way that anybody who dissects a problem, identifies the causes and mechanisms, will definitely be able to find a solution. So you can see how scientific the approach is. There is no magic here. I cannot just simply take some herb and do some magic and then the disease will go. This is not magical healing. You have to identify, study the problem, identify the cause, identify the mechanism and then formulate a solution according to this understanding. This is the only way to treat diseases. Even if you are telling a mantra and healing a disease, there is, it is after this analysis that I am deciding, okay, here I have to do Daiva Vipassana. Mantra has to be given. It is not magic. There is a reason why that mantra is being, you know, taken as a healing measure. Anyway, it is beyond the scope of our discussion to go into, you know, all these different types of healing. But Ayurveda considers all methods of healing have a place. So when this knowledge was transmitted, in, when this logic was transmitted to, so this logical thinking was what was transmitted to Bharadwaj. He was not given a set of instructions, take bala in one gram in the morning, 20 grams in the afternoon, 30 grams in the night, you do some, take some medicine, vomit. This, is, this was not what Indra advised. He gave him the whole logic of Ayurveda so that Bharadwaj could create also manuals and procedures and protocols. So once that essential knowledge and methodology was given to Bharadwaja, he came down. So Anantaparam, Anantaparam, which is no limit. Ayurveda is no limit. That is why he said, Indra said, if I am going to tell you everything about Ayurveda, you will never go back. I can never finish it. So I now I know I have told you enough now that you can develop According to the need, you can apply this knowledge. And it is Anantaparam. There is no time Ayurveda will cease developing or adapting or being applied. Applications will keep change according to the situation. So this is Anantaparam. There is no limit to this. So I have only given you the essence. And in all traditions, it was this essential knowledge that was transmitted. Making each person. Tattvathikata Shastra Artho Drishta Karma Swayam Kriti. That was how a Vaidya was trained. Shishyo dhyapyo gato yavad andam tandrartha garmanam. When they are capable of, you know, doing their own treatment. Okay, there is a question from Rippi. Again, I request you to please put it to everybody. Because, you know, when I answer, others won't know what question was asked. So here is a question, sir, can we consider Patyahar as Hetu for Swasthaya? Yes. And a good question, if we can, then what will be the Aushadha for Swasthaya? So Swasthobi Chikitsyaha. 
even if you are a swastha see the prevention you are achieving swastya here maintaining it but you must prevent a disease also so whatever you are taking for prevention whatever you are taking i am having some level of health see i what what health i have in the morning there is no guarantee it will be there in the evening tomorrow my health may go so i have to increase my swasthasya urjas karam ayurveda says there are two types of medicine swasthasya urjas karam kinjit kinjit arthasya roganut swasthasya urjas karam veshajam so that which enhances i am already healthy but i want to be even more stronger i should be more less fatigued i must be able to give but more output i want to improve my immunity further all those medicines which upgrades your health to higher states this is all aushada for swastha so charaka samhita in chikitsa sthana gives this division division swasthasya bhayashajan dvitham medicine is of two types swasthasya urjaskaram kinjit kinjit arthasya rogam is that clear so patyahara is to maintain but if i can also devise medicines rasayanas which can actually improve the health of the individual and today you know once a disease you are disease free nobody is bothered there is we don't have a health cultivating culture today we are only trying to control diseases or manage diseases it's a very curative oriented culture so that is why we are even doubting whether there is any medicine possible for a swastha so swastha has to be urjas karatvam mm-hmm. more urja has to be brought in apragampyatvam and one major thing is if you don't give aushada for swastha then you cannot age in a healthy manner when you are aging jara vyadhi yad jara vyadhi dashanam jara vyadhi swabhavika vyadhi even if i am best healthy person in the world when i am old age when i become old i am likely to get diseases so the medicines for swastha is to minimize the old age diseases so that even during old age i am having my basic functionality i may not be in the pink of my health I may not be able to run out around and do gymnastics but i don't need a wheelchair i don't need somebody to hold me at least that much of health we must have in old age and ayurveda says it's possible to age healthily a being you know preserving your cognitive function you can age so that is what is meant by aushada for swastha sonanda param triskandham ayurvedam mahamati yathavat achirat sarvam bubudhe tanmana muni achirat not, not much time see for our so what i have always felt how long does it take to learn ayurveda i have asked this question to many many people some people said 5 years 5 and 1/2 years is a course study but I, in my opinion after 5 and 1/2 years i learned not much i felt i don't know anything about ayurveda though i passed my exams very well i felt so ignorant that there's so much to learn so how many years are needed some people say lifetimes are needed but it struck me that actually the time needed to study ayurveda is only one moment everything you know everything the knowledge of the whole comes as a whole not in bits and pieces so why then we are spending years and years it is to prepare for that one moment that is why the t- learning of ayurveda is a lifetime engagement but when that knowledge really happens it just takes one moment in one moment everything flashes in your mind so because bharadwaja was prepared he was able to grasp that knowledge in no time yathavad achinat sarvam bubudhe tanmana munihi but for us to reach this stage may require lifetimes but that's okay we can still start making use of the knowledge that we acquire little by little little by little our mind expands and opens but here it is being shown that the real knowledge of ayurveda is an insight that comes when your mind becomes clear 
Sonandaparam Triskandham Ayurvedam Mahamati. Because Bharadwaja was a Mahamati, Achirad, Yathavad, he learned everything without much delay. And Tenayur Amitam Lebhe Bharadwaja Sukhanvidam. That is the promise that is given to us also that if you learn Ayurveda correctly, Amitam Ayuhu Lebhe, you will get unlimited lifespan. Amitam, it doesn't mean infinite. You get long life. You live for a long period. And not only that, that Amitam Ayuhu Sukhanvitam, it is with happiness. It is said that Durlabham hi Sada Sukha. Sari ro manaso vabi kachi denam na bathade, santapo vabi dapo va. Durlabham hi Sada Sukham. This is from Ramayana. So when Rama Bharata they are meeting, he is asking. Sariro manaso vabi kachi de enam na bata de. Do you have any problem with your body or mind? Santabo va abhidabo va. Do you have any santabo or abhidabo? Because durlabham hi sada sukham. We are always doing actions that bring us surprise shocks in our life. When everything seems to be going well, like a thunderbolt, like a lightning, some calamity befalls us. This is the nature of life. So Ayurveda is telling in order to avoid that we must live with the harmony of nature, the rhythm of nature. Satyam Vadishyami Rutam Charishyami. When you do that, the result is Amitam Ayuhu, Sukhanvitam Amitam Ayuhu. And Rishibhyo Anathigam Tacha. Shashamsan avashesha, Shashamsa anavashesha. And then Bharadwaja transmitted this whole knowledge to the rest of the Rishis without not talk more nor leaving anything left. Everything was transmitted to the Rishis. So this is a story, but in that story is clothed. You know, the story is a clothing of very profound ideas of how knowledge should be obtained. That is the purpose of discussing Ayurveda Avatarana. So we have to have an unbiased mind. We have to have a connection with nature. We must have that aspiration, that intention of Bharadwaja. We must be an Ugra Tapaha. We must be a Mahamatihi. And we must have all that most Vinayam and that ability and that intention to receive. When all these things come together, any human being can create that moment in which the knowledge of Ayurveda flushes. Reading Swadhyay of the text is a process through which you are opening your mind. You are, you are, all this reading of the text is preparing us for this kind of blossoming or unfolding. Knowing just these verses alone will not make us a Vaidya. This is all preparation. Shabdaha Vahanti Shastra Arthan. Shabdaha Shastra Arthan Vahanti. Shabdas are only carrying the meaning of the Shastra. The Shabda is not the Artha. The Shabda is not the Lakshya. Shatarjani Darsane Nabi Loke Lakshya Sujanam. By showing a finger, we are pointing out to the Lakshya. The goal. In a similar way, the Shastra is just pointing out to the truth. That Shastra or the Shabda is not the Lakshya. What it is pointing to is the Lakshya. So the Shastras have to be studied in that way through this process of Manana, Shravana Manana Nididhyasa. And when it goes in deep into our being and when this transformation happens, then the knowledge of Ayurveda is manifesting in everybody. So we have gone through this whole narrative of how Ayurveda manifested in the human mind for the first time. 
and this is an opportunity even today Bharadwajas are waiting to be awakened Indra is always there ready to transmit this knowledge but we have to take that initiative so namaste our time is up we will meet again on monday thank you sir namaste thank you sir thank you thank you oh स्थापकाय च धर्म सेवधर्मस्वूपिणे अवतारवरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा ते नम राम कृष्णा ते नमः